final product, which is actually a uh, photo I took in Lake Tahoe and now is printed and framed and in the local art gallery. Uh, I was talking about this in my last video, but let's jump into this. So this whole project we can do in Affinity Photo or Photoshop. In Photoshop, um, it'll be a little bit different, so I'll get to that once I get uh, Creative Cloud on my computer. But uh, here we go in Affinity Photo. So if you go to File, New, then it lets you set up your document. And so right now I have it under Photo, and then I have the preset size. Uh, that was just what it first comes in as. Um, and then I put it to inches and so that I can put it to the same uh, frame size that's, that is framed in in the actual um, framing. And that's just 14 by 11. And then you want to make sure that it's not portrait unless you have a portrait picture. In that case, click the portrait here, and that'll be very useful for you. Uh, I put it at 300 DPI. Put it at what you want. Uh, if you don't know what DPI is, it's uh, kind of like the quality of a picture. Um, and so 72 is not going to be very high, and obviously 400 is as high as you can go. But 300 is what usually is standard for a uh, high quality camera and so that's what I have it for because that's what's on my camera and so I put in uh, include margins and I just put one inch all the way around and so we can press OK here and we can go file place and then uh, it'll let us select the photos here so I'm just gonna go into my folder and uh, you just find the photos you want. So the first photo I'm going to pick out is going to actually be the background photo that's going to be blurred out. And I'm going to open that. And then we're going to, uh, we want to make it bigger than the actual um, document. And you'll see why in a second. Um, so Affinity Photo lets us just drag out the size we want it and it'll keep it to scale and so I'm just gonna do it like that and then I'm gonna go alignment center and alignment middle so center is from left to right middle is from top to bottom and that just makes it so you can make sure that it is in the perfect center spot. And so you can go file, place, and get your second photo. And so usually you would pick the same photo just because um, then it's relative. But when I originally did this, I actually felt like just doing a uh, two different photos and these were both of the same tree so um, it kind of matches in and I did opposite ones for the other photo that's uh, I have framed in in my windowsill right now is actually has it the other way around and so here you want to just make sure it's within the margins and make the size you want I just went from so that it fills up from left to right and then I knew that from top to bottom it wouldn't fill all the way and that's why I originally did this project was because I knew that if I didn't do that then it would actually crop when I went to go print the photos and so I didn't want any cropping at all and then I'm just gonna center it just to make sure it's in a good spot and so if we go back to the first image we grab the selection tool and we make sure we're just at the top left corner or really any of the corners of this blue line which is the margin we set out at the beginning or I set out um, and if you set it out then you'll have it too 
and it's just a good guideline and so here you'll see I have it selected and you can just hit mask which is going to be over here in the right panel and from there it'll just get rid of um, all the all the lining on the outside and how that works is it's gonna make everything black in the mask except for what you just selected and so that is how I approached it and uh, that's how I found it easiest to approach in uh, Affinity Photo and so if we go back down to this bottom one real quick we can go to filters, gushing blur, and then here we can set up the radius. And so uh, it will automatically let you um, live preview this right on the screen. And then if you want, down here there's the three circles, and right now it's on the full one, so it shows the full effect. And then on the second one, it'll be half and half, so you can see after and beforehand, and it even has the tabs down here to show you after, beforehand, and you can drag it from side to side just so you can see. And then here, it'll show you both of them uh, from side to side, and so here you can see the effect really well, and I'm just going to bring it out so that it's enough to where it's not distracting you the second image you don't want to distract you um, otherwise that's just gonna take away from the first image instead of giving it that extra boost of um, ability and so if you wanted to do this then the masking that is totally fine um, in fact I'm just gonna do the masking again because as you can see the blur um, kind of filters it outwards a little bit and um, you don't want it going into the rest of the photo and so it's always a good idea to just double check on things and make sure things are set out correct and so here we can go to the second image and and in this there's going to be multiple tabs and that took me a second to figure out so up here we have the histogram if you want to see um, and then in the second one we're gonna have adjustment layers uh, effects and then styles stock and uh, from here I really don't know what stock does but if we go back to the adjustments and we scroll down we can click curves and it'll bring us to where um, here we can make a curves adjustment and I'm just gonna bump up the contrast so just a tiny bit um, so we can make an S curve for that and for every picture it's gonna be different maybe you don't want to do an S curve um, sometimes it's just better not to and but for the effect here that I did, I did S curves um, for um, red, master, and green. And then the blue, I'll show you here what I did is I pulled this one down and then down here towards where the bottom side of the other S curves are. I'm just going to pull up a little bit and that's just going to uh, even back out the blue a little bit and you want to have kind of a curve if you're going for the same thing as me. Again, for every photo it's going to be different and just I'm going to lower the opacity so that it's just not so dramatic um, and maybe you do want it to be dramatic and so up here again you have the color, color swatches, brushes and I just keep it on color and so if we um, hide that you'll see the difference and so if we click on the second one and we click on the curves um, 
you can make a contrast and you can actually darken it a little bit and the reason you would want to darken it a little bit is just to give it some uh, depth and so that it again doesn't take away from the first image and you really don't want to distract people with the second image that is not the point here and so we can just do that and then from there it's really the same as the other one except on this one I have the border and one of the reasons I did the border for this tutorial is you can actually go to the bottom uh, do new layer uh, make sure you drag it to the bottom if it's not already at the bottom and you can go paint bucket and you can choose your color so say you wanted a kind of a pasty red you can do that and just go to the side and paint it with the paint bucket um, that's not really a pasty red is it um, and so here it'll just do its thing and you can uh, really get some cool ideas from uh, just using this border and the reason I would do that is because it really doesn't cost anything or if you're doing things digital and you just want to border around it digitally um, it's not costing anything so might as well experiment with it and really get what you want out of it so thank you for watching this video and that's the end of this so I'll see you in my next video and thank you for watching bye